In today's video, we're gonna learn how important your glucose levels and ketone levels are in you determining how, how your body's responding to your diet and when you're eating. If you're fasting, if that fasting becomes too stressful, all of these things as far as your fat loss goes, we're going to we're going to understand how it works with something like a keto mojo uh, glucose monitor. You have the power to learn data about what your body is doing in response to what you're eating and how you're living, how you're exercising. Um, let's get to it. My name is Connie. I'm a functional nutritionist. I specialize in menopausal fat loss, and this is Over 50 Fat Blast, Weight Loss Secrets for the Over 50 Woman. I'm 62 years old. I have been there. I've struggled with my weight and my health, and I want to show you tips and tips um, in all things fat loss and health and longevity, really. So today we're going to talk um, about the Keto Mojo and how important it is to your kind of learning what your metabolism is doing and how your metabolism is functioning. Um, it's really something that I am so grateful is available to us because many times when we're on the fat loss journey and we're just not, you know, we, we, we've been on the low calorie train or the starvation diet for way too long, eating foods that are definitely nutrient deficient. And when we have that kind of stress, it's, um, it's hard on our metabolism and it's hard on our bodies. And a lot of times we're going to take food um, that isn't so wonderful like sugar and um, overeat it. And there's also, you know, our microbiome is at play here. Our microbiome determines how uh, the body breaks down food. Our microbiome kind of determines how our body responds to food. Your response is gonna be different than my response as far as how your body reacts to certain foods. Important that we do intermittent fasting and when we are practicing that intermittent fasting, um, can we have a little bit of stevia in our electrolytes or um, something? How is that going to act in our body? And if we can test with the glucose monitor how a food affects us, and really know what's going on with our, our glucose levels, um, then we're gonna be able to tackle the insulin resistance problem. Insulin resistance is when your body has been given too much sugar and you have too many toxins on board and you have um, the stress of your cortisol levels and stress could impact your insulin levels. But when you know what your glucose is doing in your bloodstream, then you can manage it much better. And when you know how deep into ketosis you are, I mean, it's a game changer for fat loss. If you, I, mean, I feel like using a, a glucometer or a keto mojo um, is so much um, motivation because you can really tap into the data. With the Keto Mojo, you're going to be able to, to know where your glucose levels are. And of course, every time you eat, your glucose levels are gonna jump up. Um, that's how the body responds. But you're going to be able to kind of give a meal a grade, if you will. You're gonna be able to know if white rice is something that shoots your glucose up, you know, 20, 30 points, and when maybe a sweet potato will only bump it up five or 10 points. So there's a real nice um, kind of 
you're going to maximize your efforts when you understand how your body responds to cookies and um, candy and you know things that you know you shouldn't be eating but you might need a little kick in the pants to to give you the you know complete awareness that's going to help you maintain your glucose levels and lower that insulin overall so that you can tap into fat burning mode now your average blood sugar level over a two to three month period can be found on your standard blood work um, with the A1C test. And that is a real good marker to know how metabolically stable you are. If your um, A1C is 5.1 and under, then I'm not concerned and you get a gold star. If your A1C is uh, 5.2 and above, then we have work to do. Um, you have inflammation. It says that your glucose is too high overall, and let's work on that. Um, so grab your last uh, labs and take a peek. Um, and if that is something concerning to you, then let's definitely um, understand it. So when we're looking at glucose levels, we want um, to you know, start with a fasting glucose level. I like to test upon awakening so that you get an idea of you, know, you are in a fasted state when you wake up after 12 hours of not eating anything. And um, it's, it's good to have that under 90. Often, in first thing in the morning, if you do have some metabolic issues, you might experience, you know, a reading of 111, 120. That tells us that you've got a little bit of stress or something's going on to, you know, rev your glucose. We call it the dawn effect. Um, in the morning, early hours of the morning, your body will um, create cortisol. Cortisol is going to help you wake up and get get to the day so um, it, it's it it makes sense and it's not a terrible concern <clears throat> for you to have a little higher glucose level first thing in the morning but what we want to see is we want to see that glucose um, level dropping as you are fasting longer and if it starts to rise too much that tells us that there's a little bit of hermetic, hermetic stress. Hermetic stress is that kind of stress that exercise gives us, that fasting um, longer term gives us um, and it's a good thing. I mean it keeps your body kind of working so we're not too terribly concerned when you've got a little stress in the morning because of either you're getting out of bed, waking up, and your body's just kind of a little keyed up. <clears throat> and then, but we want those glucose levels to fall and be under 90 in those next few hours before you eat. Um, if you wanted to do a, kind of a glucose reading a couple times throughout the day, which I would recommend if you've never done anything like that and you really don't know what your glucose levels are doing, then I would measure f right before you have your first meal. Um, many of us are having that first meal a little later in the morning or you know even midday. So test right before you eat. Um, it'll be interesting to see the difference between that first fasted uh, glucose test and the, um, the one right before you eat. So then we also want to test how that meal worked in your body. So we're going to be uh, making sure that we test like an hour to two hours. I like, I like it an hour, hour and a half after your meal. Um, because it's going to give you an idea of how, ob obviously first how much sugar you're eating but how your body's dealing with that sugar and so after that meal your blood sugar is going to bump up maybe 20 to 30 points and 
um, it'll, it'll be a good idea for you to kind of keep track, keep track of what food you're eating and how much and what your body's response to that. Um, then maybe you want to test right at bedtime just to see where you are as the day has ended. Um, really moving along, you know, and, and, and really being compliant with your food, you might want to check your ketones. If you want fat loss, if you want fast access to fat loss, then you're going to want to check ketones. And the way we do this is the same. Um, you know, you prick your finger, there's videos on YouTube uh, with the Keto Mojo, and it'll educate you on exactly how you go about setting up your little meter. And, um, um, but it does have glucose strips and it has ketone strips. Blood ketones are really fun to measure because it's, um, it's gonna really rapidly just use your stored fat for fuel and that's exactly what you want to do especially for menopausal fat loss to be uh, classified in ketosis you want your ketone levels to be uh, 0 0.5 and you would test that any time during the day um, and I would say if you're not able to get into ketosis after eating very low carbohydrates for two to three days, then we need to talk about what else is going on. Um, don't be concerned, it's common. And sometimes when there's more toxic load and your liver, liver's just a little more maybe congested or unhappy, um, or sluggish, you're not going to ax, be able to, your body's not going to be able to make ketones um, like you want to. So we need to work a little bit harder to get you into ketosis where your body's got, you know, insulin low enough to be able to um, make ketones from the fat in, in that's stored on your body. You're also going to be able to know what foods kick you out of ketosis um, you know it's it's interesting when I've been you know on my journey um, it took me a very long time to get in ketosis um, I've got some gut issues going on and that stress was really kind of taking over and increasing my cortisol so that I was my insulin was high because I always had a little bit of glucose and insulin um, in my bloodstream on a stress um, level, I wasn't eating poorly, but that's just how the body responds to when it's not happy. So um, as I started testing my glucose levels, I was higher than I wanted to in the morning. And as I got more mel uh, metabolically sound and I really got my protein intake up and really kind of mastered the carbohydrate creep, um, I was able to lower my morning glucose levels, meaning overall the inflammation and stress was much less in my body and I was able to drop that 10 pounds that I, you know, that magically appeared as menopause progressed in my body. Um, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to have information so that you are really in the know and not guessing about what's going on. And it's, uh, you know, a lot of extra steps, but for a few weeks, especially when you're motivated to lose the fat and learn more about how to do it easy, easily, I really feel like the Keto Mojo is a wonderful tool. Um, I do have a 15% discount uh, link in the description box below. Just press more um, and that'll open that description box up and you'll be able to find that link for Keto Mojo. I, I'm so excited to be able to share this. Um, I think that m many people just are not aware of how easy, you know, tracking can be and how motivated that can be when you start seeing results. 
and understanding it in a different way and knowing that you have access to tools and um, tools that will gain you control. Honestly, it's, it's, the, it's the best thing when you're, when you're feeling supported and you're feeling like you have some tools to pull the levers. Um, I'm always available for a jumpstart session to uh, offer you a recipe for success in your fat loss journey. Um, we're definitely here to feel good and it's important for you to understand that that doesn't have to be you know difficult um, we can take steps to maximize your efforts and understanding what it takes and really being present for the journey before you is is such an important thing I want good things for you. You deserve to feel good in your body. And with a few tweaks and, and um, tools, you're gonna, you're gonna master this. Remember that when you have a solid plan for your diet and lifestyle, say you know what meals are going to keep your glucose levels low, and you can go to those meals day in and day out without really wondering. And your body has a chance to relax and be okay with how you're feeding it. Um, so food, the amount of exercise that you're getting, you're gonna wanna exercise to increase obviously your activity and move your body and oxygenate your blood, but you're also going to want to use up stored glucose in your body. Um, the exercise is gonna help really kind of blow out the pipes and utilize um, stored glucose and burn more fat. It's also gonna make you feel better. So just do it, <laughs> don't overthink it. Um, just 10 minutes, get started with something. Put on a YouTube uh, fat loss, uh, weight resistance um, video, or get outside and take a walk. Non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Uh, sleep, you know that sleep is essentially important for cellular repair. Um, right along, the, the sleep is, is gonna keep your cortisol levels low. And it's so essential to the, the process. Fat loss is absolutely disrupted when you don't sleep. So your sleep hygiene is really important to dial that in. And when hormones are off and um, you've got issues going on with inflammation, you might not sleep as well as you want to. It's a double-edged sword and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, a really bad cycle to be in. So just start, start somewhere. Um, if you can utilize the tools like the Keto Mojo and um, the protein hack with maybe the perfect aminos or the Equip Foods uh, Prime Protein uh, um, uh, Protein Powder, and really increase that protein so that you have more satiation and you're not snacking and you're not craving carbs, you're gonna go further and further and further in healing and fat loss and you're gonna feel better. And once you get a little momentum, I promise you, you're going to be moving in the right direction and feeling like you're invincible. You will feel better and better and better. And it's just getting the right recipe. So. Hopefully that was helpful. I love spending time here um, and I appreciate you being here and um, liking and subscribing to my channel. See you next time.